Welcome to our mid-year macro and market update for 2017, which we've entitled Not the Time for Complacency. Now, when we think about how the year has panned out so far, it's been largely as we had expected. We're seeing growth deepen and broaden across most of the world economies, and we've seen financial markets do fairly well. Bond yields have been capped as we had expected, while risk assets of credit and equity have moved higher. But Charlotte, why have we titled this Not a Time for Complacency, given that fairly good start to the year so far? Yeah, so growth has picked up, but we have to remember that the world economy is still extremely vulnerable. We have very high debt in most regions now, and productivity growth has been very weak since the, since the uh, beginning of the cycle. And this is why we're saying that policymakers cannot step back now. They need to focus on the things that matter for longer term growth prospects, and what they need to focus on differ between regions, be it labour market reforms, tax reforms, infrastructure spending, or further integration in the Eurozone. So now, because gro growth is picking up, it's not the time to step back on these reforms. But I guess what we're saying is, although there is a, a synchronised cyclical recovery, it sounds like the cycles are not in sync. Yeah, so the economic cycles are not at all in sync. The US economy is in the late stage of the cycle. We have very little spare capacity in that economy. The Eurozone and Japan lagging behind and of course emerging markets have a very different cycle. And this is why we do expect this better growth picture to last a bit longer. The inflation side, though, which has surprised us and I think the market alike, given that dynamic, uh, why hasn't it picked up and do we think it will indeed pick up from here? Yes, we do expect inflation to pick up, but we haven't changed our view that the pickup will be very modestly so. We think, as with many other things that in this, in this uh, recovery, inflation is just, just responding with a longer lag to what's going on in the, in, the, in the rest of the economy. So we do expect, particularly in the US, where unemployment is now at a 16-year low, we do expect this over time to become reflected in strong, stronger wage inflation. So yes, we do see inflation rising modestly going forward. But the very benign levels we're seeing now is a key reason for why we also say the policymakers, it's not the time to withdraw stimulus too aggressively at the moment. So it's a pretty good picture, by and large, from a macroeconomic perspective. Yeah, I would call it almost a sweet spot. We've got decent growth, we've got low inflation, we still have stimulus in place. So I guess I have to ask you, what does that mean for financial markets? So I think it's also a very good environment for financial markets. Given what we said about the economics and the slight pickup we're going to see in inflation, bond yields are likely to drift a bit higher. But that move will be capped for two reasons. One is simply the level of outstanding debt is still extremely high. And secondly, as you mentioned, policymakers are likely to continue to provide liquidity, which is likely to cap that move higher in, uh, in interest rates. From a risk asset perspective, both equities and credit have done well, but credit spreads are now extremely tight. And the likelihood is, as we get into the later stages of this economic cycle, that investors will increasingly favour equities over credit, and we're likely to see funds switch from the credit markets and drift back in towards the equity market, so lifting equities over the course of the next 12 months. So in summary then, we're seeing a good macro environment, but one that the policy re makers really must uh, build upon to push through the structural reforms that are necessary. From a financial market perspective, yes, bond yields are likely to move a little bit higher, but that move is likely to be constrained and the yield levels are likely to be capped somewhat for the reasons that we've mentioned. But from a risk asset perspective, still good, but equities are likely to outperform credit over the coming 12 months. <music>